Okay, so it's already starting. Great, thank you. So it's Monday. It's um, it's presentation day. So uh, let's get started. Let's see people volunteering and um, let's start a queue for people who want to present. Okay, I'm seeing a couple of hands. Uh, so okay, uh, let's. Jump right in. Um, Johannes, you can go ahead. Good morning, everyone. So today, as always, I'm going to present my last week work. So. For the last week, the uh, aim of the project was to work on the Gokara uh, data to help them understand the primary cost of, uh, causes of unfulfilled requests and uh, to come up with the solutions that recommend driver's location. And Gokara is the largest mile driver service in Nigeria. This is our data. The first one is about the completed order information, and the second one is about the uh, delivery request and from here trip in the time have one element and trip start time have a couple of non elements and here created that and uh, updated had at have a lot of uh, not a lot of all of the data points inside them is non element and here now uh, the since we need to impute that I used some method to impute them uh, we will talk about it later. So the project implementation uh, in the data exploration part, I uh, start with dropping these two columns since all of the data point is empty. Then I converted the trip start time and trip in time to date time format. And I calculated the trip origin and trip destination in kilometer using the latitude and the latitude information I got. Then I calculated the duration, uh, the time it took to complete the trip. Then, as I said, these two that the duration, the calculated duration will have none elements as well. Since this has the information about a specific uh, order, I just didn't impute them using standard like mean or median. What I did was First, I calculated the nearest uh, nearest uh, distance with the NAND element. Then I imputed the NAND elements with the, the duration, the duration of the closest distance. Uh, the concept is that if the distance between the trip is close, the duration will be uh, close as well. So that's how I imputed those data. Then I calculated the speed, and from the speed, we can see that there are a lot of outliers. So we removed, using this speed column, we removed those outliers. Then I calculated the distance from the driver location to the trip origin location. <clears throat> After that, I added some additional feature like is weekend or is holiday. I noticed that is holiday wasn't helpful. So after the data exploration phase, I develop uh, an interactive web page like this way. I don't know if you can see that. But a user can add the order date ID here, and it will tell them the driver location and the trip and destination location. The red is the trip destination. The green is the trip origin, the origin is the drivers that accepted the order and the rest are the drivers that rejected that order. So for casual learning, I started with encoding the numeric column, then I discreases the continuous variable, then I split the data into train and test sets, and I give the structure model the train and the test set separately, and take the similarity, the chart similarity, and uh, it was one meaning they were similar then i fitted on the train i fitted the Bayesian network with 
the clean set and this is the insight I got from them. So the distance of from the driver location to the trip origin, there is a, a significant causal impact on the driver action. As the distance, the distance increases, there is a switch in action, driver's action. Uh, and the second column of the distance from trip origin to destination, there is some casual influence on driver action, especially beyond the five units. When I say five units, uh, uh, I uh, I discrete uh, how I said. Uh, uh, yes, discretize. When I discretize the uh, continuous variable, I use ten bins. So after the five units, there is some change in the driver's action. And for the location of the driver, uh, the latitude some longitude and longitude shows a stronger a stronger tendency towards action zero and action one meaning that there are some location where the drivers accepted a lot of requests and for the weekend as a day of the week we can see significant increase in likelihood of action one compared to the weekdays then the last thing i did was measuring the overfit of our data so I first I used two models, random forest and the XCGB boost. And first I uh, fitted all the variable and calculated the train in the test accuracy. And with the selected variable from the uh, structure model, I did the same thing. So to uh, the way I measure the overfit is by uh, seeing the difference between the train and the test set of accuracy and from this, random forest shows overfit compared to the other with all variable so for the limitation the first thing is adding more feature like suggest like uh, weather data traffic data will be helpful and uh, with my feature engineering like i calculated the location using the latitude and longitude longitude that distance is the minimum distance meaning it's be, it's calculated from the trip origin and trip destination, uh, meaning that uh, it doesn't consider the route. So maybe uh, we need to fix that as well. And another one is understand the concept more. I spent a lot of time on the data, so and uh, I didn't understand casual inference very well. Maybe if, uh, if I have to do this project again. Uh, I will still focus on the data, but uh, uh, add more time on the casual inference as well. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Hannes. This was, this was very clear uh, presentation, very great work. So I, I have a question. So in your uh, causal inference analysis, have you tried to like uh, do any kind of intervention? Have you like changing something and seeing like what would be the effect uh or like changing what i don't know any kind of um have you done any kind of interventions and see like what is the effect will be like I, I want to just see if you have like some numbers there like changing one of the variables and in your data and then seeing what will be the outcome of it Okay, so I don't think I understood the question, but the first thing I did was I selected some of the columns and uh, gave it to the structure model and see the result. Then after doing that, I drive reaction. Okay. Um, I think I lost you at some point, or I like uh, I didn't hear your answer. Can you repeat? So the first, the first uh, route I took was I selected some of the columns, uh, only these columns, give it to the structure model, mm -hmm. and it sees their, their influence. Then after doing that, the second thing I did was giving the entire data the entire data to the structure model and just see which one have uh, effect on the driver actions. Okay. 
Okay, so, all right, um, thank you. So, um, uh, let's see if, uh, um, one second. Uh, that now, do you have any questions for for the Let's see. Otherwise, who was like uh, can in meanwhile just uh, say, Johannes, uh, just say on the standby for a bit, and uh, anyone else who wants to present? There's Michael. Anyone else? Please raise your hand. Okay, so are you honest? You can like thank you. Uh, it's uh, I don't think there are other questions from from the team. Uh, but yeah, good presentation. Okay, thank um, you. Right, uh, Michael, you're ready. Can you hear me? Yes, we do. Okay. Good morning, everyone. Uh, last week's project was about logistic optimization. Uh, so we are supposed to work on the casual inference, meaning understanding the primary cause of the unfulfilled request by the Gokada company, as well as come up with solutions that recommend the driver location so that to increase the fraction of complete all orders. So these the are the tech stack I use, the casual next for Bayesian network to complain machine learning. And for data processing, I used NumPy, Pandas, and so on. For calculating point from given vector from the distance, uh, calculating by latitude and longitude, I used a Python framework called Hover sign. And these are the tech stack. So for the data exploration part, I conducted IDE on the data. So even though the data was a bit messy and there there are there was some missing values, so understanding the data was very hard. Even though I tried my best, so uh, after that, uh, I by using public domain, uh, I added some uh, columns on the data like holiday, not holiday out of the time, weekend, weekday, and weather data. Then I, cal I calculated the distance from the driver to the original request. Uh, and I, cal I calculated the distance from the trip origin up to the destination as well. Then we can get the speed from the distance and the time. I get the weather data from this uh, openweathermap.org and define rain, no rain for simplicity. Uh, then so I, I, I computed all this, so the results were this of and also as well the merged data. So uh, we get the weekday, the trip destination, the holiday, the rain, the distance, the speed and the displacement. Uh, and then uh, for the for the uh, causal next, we want to make sure that our data, all our data should be numeric. So uh, I changed some of them, like uh, the driver act action for the accepted, I assigned one and for the rejected, I assigned zero. Then that is the same for all of them, uh, all like for the non-numeric data. So uh, the visualization, this is, for example, one for one ID, the trip origin, related, so sorry, the, the driver's location is uh, relative to the trip origin. Uh, and uh, and the uh, results, the connections I get was this after many iterations. The driver actions, uh, I saw that the driver action was affected by the uh, speed, the distance, the victory and displacement. Uh, so the the problems were because the columns were not was not uh, many, getting many connections and. Uh, showing or calculating casualty was a bit difficult. Uh, so from this, uh, the results I get was 
sorry, uh, Michael. Uh, okay. yes, I'm sorry to interrupt. Can you go back? Okay. What, what is the displacement you're defining here? Okay. Uh, the displacement was the, the distance from the driver to the origin. Yes, I just okay. called ah, displacement right. for. Uh, uh, and distance is um is a difference between origin and the destination. The the distance means the trip of origin. Yeah. And the destination. Okay. okay. Thank you. Yeah. I just want to understand what. Okay. So from that, I get this connection. So. Uh, I couldn't get far from this because when I when I continue, uh, the, it will decrease one of them and it will become circle. So when the connection was become circle, I uh, uh, the casualness can't go so far. I don't know why. So I tried doing manually the manually doing the connections, but it wasn't feasible. So. Anyways, this was, these are the results. So from this result, I know that the driver action directory affects the fulfillment of the requests. And as well, the driver action was mainly affected by the distance, the victim, and the displacement. Uh, and the challenges was uh, first, uh, casual, understanding the concept of casual inference. Uh, and the second one is the data understanding the data it was not clear and complete so my first uh, assumption was the the user ask the user asks a request then the one driver uh, accepts and the other uh, one does the system gives send the request to all the drivers then one of the driver accepts then the other the system will reject the others, the other drivers. So, uh, so the system will make the rejection. That was my initial assumption, but uh, I understand that that was not the case. The drivers reject the themselves. Then after that, one of the drivers will accept it so that the, the user was not happy or satisfied. So that that was the thing we are supposed to figure out. So, but uh, okay. Then the for future plan, maybe for 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 getting enriched data and other data, maybe we can contact or establish a direct partnership with Gokada if it is the real uh, project. And another one is creating dy dynamic visualization uh, for one driver, so that if you if you if you can get or see the day in the life of one driver, we can see the routes and all the other real time traffic conditions and potential point of friction so that after that we can maybe leverage the casualty inference thank you uh, okay thank you michael uh, um okay so even though like it's not completed it's still like a, it's a clear presentation on like what is that kind of these limitations you have faced so going back uh, as, like uh, to the causal inference and like the problem with the graph um so okay so you said you tried to like create like you were getting all of this uh like because you you, you said that because you were using um limited number of variables you were getting this like um graphs that didn't make uh, enough sense and you said that you tried to do it by hand basically creating the graph yourself so why why haven't you like um, like moved forward with the with the manual creation? Why haven't you like created like the graph manually and tried to fit the data to it? Uh, I tried that yesterday, but uh, if, the, there was no enough uh, columns. For example, calculating is fulfilled or not fulfilled. For example, you can calculate that by uh, seeing the distance. So we can label that if the distance is like below 0 0.1 kilometer or something like that, we can say that uh, the request is not fulfilled. So that means the driver starts uh, like driving like 500 meters, something like that, and stop so that you can say the request is not fulfilled or something like that. But it was, I, I was running out of time, that's why. Oh, okay, so you're saying that you're missing your, ta your target variable that was not there in the data? Pardon? Sorry, so you like this uh, for you're talking about this fulfillment variables. Are you saying this is the target variable that you should? You really needed to include it in the graph. That's why you haven't like uh, 
is this part? No. Uh -huh. uh, the target variable was and the driver, uh, the driver action. location. Sorry, the driver action was uh, okay. target variable, but because there was not enough column, like the casual, I, uh, my understanding was that the casual next, even the, in the documentation, there are like 32 columns so that we can get many nodes and connection from that. But if you have like four or five uh, columns, I don't think uh, working, uh, I don't know, maybe that was my understanding, but from from that proceeding was very difficult, yeah. Yeah, okay. Um, it's understandable if the time wasn't enough or like you were not having the right understanding at the time, but it is possible to like, you could have created the graph manually completely, or like um, if you have like enough, like uh, if you think like you have like some kind of uh, a good guess or like, um, let's say, and um, some kind of, it's supposed to be domain knowledge, but like if you have some kind of good guess, you can have like add that. If you have created the graph like the one you had with many connections, maybe they didn't make sense, you could have dropped just part of them and then moved forward with the, like, what remained that maybe made sense. Okay, but uh, that's uh, like, uh, you did good, good work. Uh, thank you, presenting. Uh, um, so let's uh, move to the next person and I don't see any hands. So, okay, we have Japes. Uh, anyone else? I want to see more people just in the queue. Um, okay, have a so. All right, good. Um, just prepare yourselves, Japes. If you're ready, you can go ahead. Can you see my screen? Yeah, we can see it. Okay, this is, uh, uh, as previously mentioned, uh, I think we, I can uh, skip over this. We know that the business is for the good, the go card up. So uh, our primary target is to find a way uh, so that unfulfilled requests uh, could be fulfilled so that uh, we could have a suggestion for Godaka. So that was the target. Uh, so this is the literature review. So we have these two data. The first one is the trip uh, data and also the location data. So I try to merge both the data. First, preparing both the data so that it can, it could, they could have the same columns and so that I could be able to merge. Uh, I prepared both of them. Uh, then I try to merging because we know that we have uh, both of them has a trip uh, ID uh, and the other one has the order ID and we know that these are the same ID so we can merge them using this uh, column so I merge them then I do uh, EDA, EDA so I uh, removed values I checked them uh, using a threshold and uh, because they were under the threshold I used the 5% threshold. So under that, I removed them. I also deal with outliers. I checked the latitude, the longitude, and they were uh, data that are uh, out of range because they, uh, they had uh, a distance uh, more than uh, 200 kilometers and above. So I, uh, but, uh, I didn't just remove them manually. I used Z, the Z score. I calculated the Z score and I, uh, uh, use the threshold less than three, so I removed those columns. Uh, so then, then the other thing is I added features. So uh, using the data, sorry, the date, I try to add a feature like week if the date is weekdays or weekend. I used also the weather condition. I use an API to check the weather for that day, and I use if it's sunny day or uh, cloudy day or uh, and such. And I also try to get the holidays for uh, Nigeria. I think they have the same uh, calendar as the Gregorian calendar, and they have uh, different, also different holidays. But I try to input those holidays. Then I try to calculate the distance between the client and the driver. So I I calculated the minimum distance uh, between the driver and the the client. 
So after that, uh, I try to visualize. This is just uh, visualizing the the data on the map, and also I use the streamlit just to check the the routes. I I don't know if these routes are uh, right or wrong because, as you know, uh, we don't. I we only have the latitude of or the origin and or latitude and longitude for the destination. So the the path that uh, this drone may not be true. I just use the uh, uh, API just to take the best route. So the, I, I'm not sure if it's right or not. And I, I just plotted uh, about uh, four, uh, four destinations because uh, the API was limited and I was not able to get as much as I can. Uh, then after that, uh, I, I use the casual NICs. So I uh, for casual NICs, I use two types. The first one is, Casual discovery. So what I was trying to do is uh, to able to casual next to learn uh, the casual relationship between the variables on itself by just looking at the data. So I try to do that uh, after and the casual next use the no tiers algorithm. So it discovers uh, the structure by itself. So this looks like the structure. This is the final uh, structure that uh, by uh, uh, casual nix it's di discover this casual relationship and some of them it's it makes sense uh, but some of them will, uh, doesn't make sense for example as you can see the driver action accepting or rejecting uh, an order can be it says it can be influenced by the holiday name holiday name means, means if the, if it is different in different holidays the driver actions could be uh, influenced by that which which can be true also the distance to the client also, this icon means the weather. Uh, if the weather is uh, cloudy or rainy, it could influence driver action. But the reverse is not true. Uh, I don't think the driver action can influence the weather. So this 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 uh, seems wrong. And I try to use the threshold so that it could remove the weak links. And this is this is the final. But as you can see, the final one also is not good because as you, as you can see. Uh, it says that the driver action can is uh, driver action can influence the distance to client, which is uh, cannot cannot be possible. The driver action can uh, influence the weather. But this cannot be true. Also, the holiday. So uh, I uh, discard this one and I try to move to the domain knowledge. So for the domain knowledge, I just I didn't just uh, depend my uh, knowledge, but I also try to use uh, Chat GPT. I input the the column's name to ChatGPT and uh, ask it uh, to uh, plot. So it plots this one. Uh, so and this seems right. It uh, just uses its training data and it plots this one, which makes sense. The distance of to the client, the holiday name, the day type, and also I can the weather can influence the driver's action, which makes sense. So I try to use the the data and try to uh, tra uh, train and test the data. So I use the mo uh, mo uh, probability model. Uh, I build that and I got uh, this result for the first by conditioning the probability distribution. So as you can see, for example, what this result show is that, for example, I for one for one data, if the day is a weekday and if there is a holiday, oh, it's like uh, Al Hijira holiday, and if it is a clear day. The weather day, uh, is a clear day. The probability of driver accepting an order is 50-50. So it shows that. And however, if the uh, the if it is raining, just only changing that variable, the weather variable, if we change it's raining, it becomes 99.9 percent. Uh, it's, uh, it's funny because I don't think that's uh, uh, true because ha -ha, most probably drivers will not accept uh orders when it's raining i think that's a common sense but uh, this was my result i i i see that and i tried to uh, use another uh, thing i tried to use the prediction from method from the casual nix so what it's i give it a constant thing like the weather rainy day holiday no holiday if there is no holiday and weekday and the distance to client it is long i discrete the data uh, to stay short uh, very short, uh, long, and very long. So for for discrete for the distance to the client. So if it's long, uh, 
uh, what is the prediction? I try to do that and the prediction was uh, rejected. So the driver will reject if these things are true. And I tried to use the ground truth because I had a ground truth. So when I check that, it's also rejected. So this is this uh, two met. Uh, then I uh, uh, use different things like I use the do calculus to check uh, to uh, manipulate the data and to do interventions, which means. So what I did is that if the uh, there is no short distance between the client and the, the driver, uh, there is no long, there is no medium, and if, if it's just very short, if all the drivers are, are uh, between, uh, uh, have a distance very short to the uh, client, what will happen? So this is what I get. So what it means is that if all the customer's distance to the driver is very short, the acceptance rate of the driver increases from 21% to 12%, which means 1% increase. So this was the one thing I got. So I, I was not able to check most of the, the uh, intervention because I ran out of time. Uh, if I had time, I would go on to check different things, but this was the result that I did. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Jaffa. This was great. Uh, great, like very clear and uh, also creative. You have to try the uh, creative things to, in your work. So uh, great. I think there was a question from Abu Bakr. I want to actually hear that first. Uh, before I ask my questions, did you have a question or book? Okay. Meanwhile, like if uh, other question from 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 the trainees are are, are welcome. But okay, so just uh, can you define maybe for me what short distance for you is like what how like what is the numerical value for it? Is it between what and what? If uh, if you have that at hand. Yeah, yeah, so what I did is that I tried to uh, calculate the distance between the trip origin and the destination. Okay. Uh, so the driver location and the, the destination uh, location. So, okay. but as I previously mentioned, I don't know the routes, uh, which route yeah. the driver All takes. Right. It should take a you, Yeah. Yeah, you, you are calculating the minimum, I understand, because you're using latitude yes. and longitude. Okay, but like I, yeah. I'm just like asking you because you discretized the the, the distance uh, variables, so you have yes. defined short. What is short for you? Like what is the uh, what is the range for short? It is between like I'm just guessing. Is it between one zero and like three kilometers? What is it exactly? Do you have like? Okay, I, I, yeah, I, um, I have to check that uh, because I okay. didn't manually okay. put the the range. I just uh divide the distance uh, the whole distance to four categories okay okay but okay so of course like, if you don't have it at hand you can just of course like pick it up from the code fine uh so uh, my other question is um okay uh like uh, when you mentioned that like when you get uh this uh like the 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 probability that didn't make sense for you like the one when you like uh, when it is rainy you get like a higher probability in in your presentation you said like you get 99 percent if the weather is rainy um yeah. so what was that like what, what that's what the conditional probability right yeah and you can you go back if it's possible can you go back to the your presentation just okay. like so they have a I want to just to explain that part a little bit more. Um, so, okay. Can you see my screen? Yes, I can see my, your screen. Uh, yeah, okay, so this is the part. Um, so you are saying that like, uh, okay, so I can see here the conditional probability for like uh, when you have, um uh okay so like this to i can see the part we're talking about is like uh the first the first uh the first column 50 and 50 and then you have when with with rain you have 99 and uh 0. 0.0004 okay so um so yeah basically exactly this is the conditional probability uh like uh, table 
and I'm just trying to read it. So you have the day type, weekday and weekend. You have the distance long, um, very long and short or very short. The holiday name and I can, if there are like, okay. What is icon? Uh, see, is this like the cloud, the weather? Yes. The weather. All right. So fixing everything, changing the the like uh, with is weekday um, long distance in the on the holiday, then changing basically the the weather from rainy to not rainy you get these probabilities. So yeah, it, it's sounds, okay, I, I get it. So it's one just condition, it's one it's condition of probability as uh, I didn't understood. So I, I'm actually not asking any questions from you at the moment. I was just wanted to see this part. Yeah. Um, yeah. And like, uh, can you like, um, I know it feels uh, like uh, wrong, okay. Uh, but since like you expect the weather to like uh, to, the rain to actually make people less likely to to want to like do this delivery and instead it seems like the opposite um yeah i don't have actually like a, a guess of for like how to what is the resolution for that uh do you have any kind of like um explanation for this uh like, no actually i yeah i try to uh, clear out the the data maybe uh, the data uh, may have some uh, uh, wrong uh, uh, date or, or not date wrong data, so that may cause uh, this one. But yeah. uh, I'm not really sure. Okay, what about like if you like remove the holiday, like basically some all the like is it holiday or not holiday at all? Like remove this variable. What what is the potential probability you get regarding the rain? With the rain, yeah, maybe. Or what, uh, what I think now is that, for example, if uh, for example if it is raining, yeah, people most probably uh, uh, use uh, want to have a delivery. Yeah, they don't want to go out. Yeah. Uh, so maybe there is there is a lot of uh, orders coming in, and ah, okay. maybe the just out of my head maybe uh, yeah maybe yes, there is a hidden variable exactly so here like the, the number of is, is the number of uh, orders is not exactly that the rain uh, uh, directly affects uh, the yeah that's possible I, I okay that's a possibility it would be also nice to see the effect of rain alone like without like here because we are looking at the particular values for the day type the distance and the holiday so if you like sum up the effects of all of these variables, so remove them basically, and see what is the like uh, the conditional probability, like not the the full probability, not the conditional of the rain, like totally. What happens? Yeah, like, yeah. What did you see that? Like, did you calculate uh, that? Like, I can do that. Yes, I like I used for the. Yeah, the exactly. Stuff, you I can do that. Yeah. You can do that and see what is the effect. Yeah, so this is you can easily do if you haven't done. Okay, so like, thank you, thank you for this speculation. Uh, Abu Bakr, do you want to ask a question, or, or do you want to, uh, to present? Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Jabez. You can. Uh, so yeah. it's for Jabez, but yeah, okay. You want to ask a question? Go ahead. Yeah. Uh, so like, uh, maybe I think it's not concluded that the acceptance rate or the reject the rejection rate is higher for uh, rainy days probably there are other factors for example sometimes uh, i've heard or seen from uber that when it's rainy uh, its algorithm actually racks up the price for the drivers for example there are more demands of for the car and the drivers don't want to go out on the rainy, on the rainy days unless the drivers are incentivized to actually go out there and fulfill requests so maybe Gokada is actually incentivizing the drivers to actually uh, like giving higher prices for smaller trips. Probably it could be another factor or another variable we haven't considered. Okay. Since we That's... can't say it is also. Yeah, yeah. So it's... exactly. Yeah. So yeah, you are like giving a suggestion for another hidden variable, basically. 
so yeah oh, well, yeah. yes that's that's also a possibility um yeah so like uh gap is going like also like um, just um, speculated that the number of orders is higher in the rainy days now you are it's, also it's, like it's uh, suggesting higher. that maybe an incentive maybe in the pricing also for from kokada that's also a possibility so yes so that's uh, these are two possibilities and it's maybe, maybe the more. same my my guess is, is the orders might be the same it's just uh, the drivers don't want to go out on rainy days uh, yeah so we have to like day. you need to actually include yeah. these variables and see which one is actually affecting and if you come up with another speculation or other reason that can also include that so this is like great work uh yeah good suggestion from our worker um yeah, yeah also so my question is yeah. like i had uh, some issues while running the uh, structural model so uh, i had it, it takes like an hour uh, so on 100000 data like how did you guys manage to actually get get it running or do experiments on like several times so yeah how much data how much data did you use how much time did it take for your computations and email runs okay yeah. Yabes, can you answer that yeah Okay. Yeah, one thing that I it also takes for the first time I checked it out, it takes a lot of time. I started at night and I uh, leave it uh, uh, all the night and I saw the result on the morning. Uh, but what I saw another thing is that by using the by encoding it, maybe uh, I it, it took a lot uh, less time encoding before uh, uh, running the uh, uh, the algorithm, I think it may it, it will take uh, a lesser time. Uh, did you get uh, my point? Yeah, yeah. Uh, so also, how much uh, like how much of the columns did you use? Like how many columns and how many rows? Okay, I uh, I used about uh, I think it was about uh, uh, two million. I think. Uh, and the rows is this one. The uh, uh, let me show you. Uh, uh, let me just show you one. Okay, the, uh, I am okay. This was just a hit. You see, this one, this was the discrete data. So this, it is about, uh, uh, I think, two million rows mm -hmm. and five columns. Okay, um, okay. let's see like other people who present maybe can also answer this question about like how much data they fit, uh, like just to, to see, like um, uh, just compare basically. Um, so thank you, Jabez, thank you, Walker. Uh, let's see like um, who is next. Uh, before the word is so, yes, if you are ready, go ahead. Okay. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, let me share my screen. Okay. Thank you. Is it visible? It is visible. Okay. okay. Uh, good morning, everyone. Okay. Uh, uh, first, the introduction. Gokada uh, needs us uh, to work on its data. It, it gives us uh, some data and uh, to help it understand the primary cause of unfulfilled um, requests. Uh, because there was unfulfilled and unfulfilled requests, so it was uh, to many unfulfilled requests. So it wants to know what is the cause of that unfulfilled requests. Uh, so for this one, we use the causal inferences. Uh, ca ca causal inferences is a field of study that attempts us to reveal uh, causal relationship between nodes. We are making causal assumptions. It's from uh, Perl. I get uh, uh, 
definition from her. Uh, and uh, on the methodology, first I try to enrich the data. Uh, I add different parameters from the data given uh, from the company. Uh, for example, uh, the weekday, if it's weekday or uh, it's not. Uh, and if it's, it's, there is a holiday uh, and it's not the holiday. Uh, and the other one is if, if it rains or not. Uh, this one it's the merged uh, data. And from that, the merged one, I found the distance. Uh, and the distance it's from the trip origin to the trip destination. And the other one is the speed. Uh, so after that, after the data enriching, uh, I did the uh, uh, EDA, the EDA part, I tried to remove the unaccepted, there was some uh, unaccepted requests, I removed all those one because it was a uh, small number, and the other one, there was an unrealistic speeds, uh, there were some uh, big speeds, so uh, I tried to remove that one, and there was some uh, not a number values, so I tried to remove that one also. After that, uh, uh, I tried to use the causal next and uh, building and analyzing causal model uh, first uh, i used all the data then uh, uh, this is the diagram the relationship i got from it uh, then after this this one there was no uh, rain in holiday it says it doesn't have uh, any relation with that one then after this one uh, there were some uh, thresholds here uh, everything is connected but uh, there was some threshold this year, so I tried to remove that one. When I tried to remove, it, it brings this one. Then after that, I remove uh, here. There was rain or and holiday also. So here, I tried to remove uh, both of them. Uh, the, uh, after this one, uh, I didn't do uh, because it was. Uh, it says the given structure is not a cyclic. I tried to do uh, after that. Uh, but it says the given structure is not a cyclic, so I was trying to uh, know, uh, try to understand the reason. Uh, but uh, it was on Saturday night, so I couldn't do much after that one. Uh, so the challenges uh, after the the casual inference, it was uh, understanding the data because uh, what fulfilled and unfulfilled means. Uh, I, I, I try to understand, but uh, it was not easy for me because uh, fulfilled, uh, I thought first it was about if the parcel is delivered or not. Uh, but uh, after a lot of discussion with the uh, federal friendlies, uh, I concluded that, okay, let me say accepted by the drivers, it means fulfilled, and uh, rejected by the driver means it's unfulfilled. So the challenge was understanding the data. It takes a lot of time from me. The future plan, uh, reaching the data with uh, more parameters. Uh, I only take uh, around five parameters right now. Uh, for the future, I try to. I will try to add more uh, parameters, and uh, uh, I want to understand more about causal inference. My future plan. In the, the last one, I didn't do logistic optimization, so I want to do log uh, logistic uh, optimization for the future. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So this was a very good presentation. It was very clear. And uh, the discussion on the challenges you have faced is also good. Uh, so I can see that like uh, you face the problem is that the notice is, it's, a, is a, it's appearing or emerging that the collective problem that people face that when they create use notice algorithm to create the graph they didn't get a sensible graph or they get they got cyclical graph which is like of course it is a possibility you can get from from not years um uh okay so uh what i'm not getting is that like this is a question for you this so is that why didn't you try to remove some like if you found like some uh relationship didn't make sense to you why didn't you just remove them by hand uh, yeah i tried to remove i tried to remove some uh, relationships uh, First one, uh, the rain and holiday, it was, uh, there was no relationship, so uh, I removed them. And then the other one, the holiday and uh, the distance, uh, there was uh, some relationship between them. But when I think if there was a holiday or not, the distance will be the same. So I tried to remove that one also. 
yeah because like what if you ended up with uh, like and, and this is just not something that you maybe you didn't have time to do this actually but mm -hmm. like you could have like when you found that your graph is cyclical you can just have removed one of that con like the relationships that made it uh like that created the cycle just remove one of them by hand um and like uh, if like there are missing relationships that you think it is there but it's not there like after you did the algorithm and you put some threshold if you didn't find it there you could have added also by manually and try to feed the data the problem is the thing about like using no tears for creating a graph and this is something that's all the discussion about a little bit in during the week is that like um basically no tears algorithm and I'm, I'm just explaining sorry i'm not asking no, you a particular okay, question yeah, it's. Uh, I'm just saying this because it's. Uh, it's like a couple of people already have faced the same problem, so that's why I'm explaining this. And this is my own understanding that uh, notice when it calculates uh, or creates a graph for you, it's not something like um, deterministic. Like what the best thing you can actually the best way to create a causal graph is to use domain knowledge. Okay, so this is the best way. Like, if you have domain knowledge, if you know that like this variable affects the other one, and you can just create the graph from there, this is the best way. But of course, we don't have domain knowledge on everything. That's why we are using algorithms like Notice. Notice what it does is that it assumes it assumes some causal relationship of a particular kind, and then calculates from the data how much probability you can get basically uh, like uh, the, what is the most probable uh, uh, like uh, direction of relationships just based from the data. So what you get is there that because that's that's why you get like um, uh, a double uh, double directions from from the so you get two variables are connected with like uh, uh, arrows going in both directions. Which is of course like uh, no, it doesn't make sense because like uh, causally one is uh, causing the other, not like not both causing each other. That's why you get this from the from the algorithm because it doesn't exactly know. It's just I'm assuming some kind of um, uh, kind of like a relationship, like a linear kind of relationship, and calculating their probability from there and just giving you the most like uh, probable optimizing is doing some optimization algorithm and giving you the most probable graph according to that assumption so there are there are some assumptions in the algorithm so what is giving you is not like um it's not something that is indisputed indisput indisputable or something that is like a, a, a fact it's giving you just some kind of a, let's say it's um the best guess based on some kind of assumptions. Um, so yeah, it's, it, it should not be treated as something that you cannot really, how to say, I have seen people, I have tried to remove and like a nonsensical relationships using the threshold, which is fine. But if the threshold wasn't enough to remove them, or it was removing that some relationship that you really wanted or you, you thought it made sense you could just have added them by hand or most things by hand uh and this is just like my 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 uh, my own understanding i could be wrong at some point but it, yeah so anyway sorry for um taking time from your like uh oh, okay it's just, oh, 12 already uh sorry i just thought like maybe this could have provided some clarification to people uh let's see we are out of time uh for this but of course only a few people presented so um there should be another session for presentations uh so expect tomorrow morning uh on like for like the again the in the slot of uh stand up there will be presentations so everyone who didn't present today prepare yourself to present tomorrow again like consider presenting presentation is mandatory okay so just prepare whatever you had like you have seen already you're like uh, everyone who presented today had a great great presentation not everyone have finished but the presentation is great as long as you present what you did clearly and you also present like the challenges and issues that prevented you from finishing clearly as well that would make your presentation a good presentation not finishing 
not, finishing is not a requirement. Just present what you have and any challenges you have faced. Um, okay, so with that, I think I will end up this session for today. Prepare for tomorrow, please. And uh, I think we can uh, we can end the session so that we have we'll have the introduction to the to the and at nine, of course, maybe yes. Okay, not nine. Okay. Go ahead. I was just trying. To, uh, I just wanted to say, uh, let's uh, let's meet after eight minutes, so everybody can take an eight minute break, and we can just meet for the challenge introduction. Okay. At at after eight minutes, which is I think. Uh, nine, nine.